So it's time to get started back on the shaft. We got our flange side finished on the, on the outer side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and flop ends on this and we'll start getting all this finished in. We're gonna have to do some facing to get it to the right length. And we'll do some turning to get it down here. It's already very close, so it's basically gonna be finished machining. Uh, again, here's the example. So we'll be turning it to this size all the way down to this point. We'll have a diameter here for some threads and we'll have this diameter for the thrust bearing to sweat onto. And we've got to do our base grooving right there. So let's get started on it. All right, so the OD of our flange here is about five and three eighths. We're gonna go ahead and get the, the chuck jaw set here. So I'll work off of the grooves and I'm looking at either this corner here or this corner right here. That's usually how I line it up and I get them all even. So let's just, let's just start with that one right there. So that first scribe circle, we're at three. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this out to the next circle there, to the line. Right there, we've got the corner of the jaw lined up with that groove. And we're just about where we need to be. That's five and five eighths. So we'll go ahead and run the other two out equal. Okay, it's five and five eighths. So really all we need to do is go one half turn. There's five and three eighths right there. We'll go a half turn, half turn. And that should put us very close. Whenever I chuck this up, I should be within say an eighth of an inch. I mean, it should be closer than that. So we'll go ahead and just leave it right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the center. I'm just gonna chuck them very lightly and what I'll do is I'll get my soft jaws, my pads, little copper pads, so that the jaws don't dig into this nice clean surface here. And I'm gonna, actually we're gonna have to come out because this has gotta get faced just a little bit. So I got it on three of the notches, three of the serrations on the jaw. So here's some of my little copper soft jaws. That's what me and dad always like to call them, is just soft jaws. It's just copper tubing that's been cut off with a hacksaw and then squeezed tight in a vise. That's all it is, and they work excellent. And I have a different assortment of, we have some that are brass shims. I've showed those before. We have some bigger ones whenever we need a little bit more area. And then I have this copper, actually some not copper, this is brass that was actually cut out of something like a piece of tubing. And I use those every now and then too. Just keep an assortment up there on top of the lathe. The copper works good because it gives it some extra bite, some stickiness to it, you know, and it won't allow the jaws to really bite into the steel, but hold it very good. And we're going to go ahead and indicate it. Let's see. Well, you know what? We'll indicate it here. I was thinking this, but this will be um, this will be what we indicate it to. And that flange there. Have to kind of come in at a little bit of an angle to clear the jaws. All right, so yeah, we're about an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> with, the, with the copper soft jaw pads, you can't really back off completely or, or it'll fall down in the lathe there. So you just have to do a little more, a little more delicate with it. But I want to make sure that this thing is held very good after we do our after we do our turning and everything. You know, we're going to be cutting that internal square thread down there, and I want to make sure that it has no chance of slipping or anything in the jaws here in, in the chuck. All right, so we got about two thousandths right there, but 
I need to close up the uh, steady rest here. It's open and I think it's kind of it's trying to kick around just a little bit like that because it's not being held solid. So well, we got it within two right here. That's well within one, so we'll close up the steady rest and then I'll uh, make sure that this is running nice and nice and true. All right, here's a little shot of our indicating. You see we got just a little wiggle on the needle, but I'd say that's within a half a thousandth. Plenty good for what we're doing here. All right, so we're getting ready to start facing the end of this thing. And so my measurement from here to here on the original down there is 27 inches. Now I do need to go in there and face this in order to get the right length there. You know, you need to face this off here the right thickness and be able to scale it down here to the end. Can't do that because I got my steady rest right here and I don't feel like moving it right now. I just like to leave it set up, go ahead and get this faced. And measuring this with the calipers, this is supposed to be about 725 right here and we're about 750. So we've only got about 25, 30 thousandths to face off this right here. So that's not going to be no problem. That's a nice true face. So I can go ahead and just use my scale. I got this 36 inch stair. And this is what I'll use to get my end length right. We'll just butt it up on that face down there. And right now I'm at just about 28 inches. I'm just a shade over 28. So we got about an inch to come off this end. This, this end length right here, the total length of it, where this is in it is not a critical Deal because this goes through the gearbox and the attachment screw onto this end so if this is off a little bit even an inch right now is not going to hurt it but we're going to go ahead and match up what we got there as long as my dimension is down here where the bearing sits and the and the nut and the and the keyways is in relation to this face here this way we're good so let's go ahead and we'll start doing some facing Now you're probably asking, why aren't you just parting that off? That's one of the reasons right there is chatter. I'm trying to make sure we got it nice and tight here. I run into chatter issues with the tool, with a, the parting tools that I have kind of create a lot of tool pressure. And uh, I don't mind just making some passes across it just like this and uh, get it to size. But if you did want to part it off, you could just run the uh, live center up in the end right there and keep your steady rest on it and go in there and you can still part it off just fine. All right, we're getting pretty close. Made a few passes, so that, that just gives you a shot of what I'm doing here. So I got to butt it butted on the face. So that's saying we got, by sight, about five sixteenths to come off of it. So we're gonna make a few more cuts and get it really close. If I had the proper steady rest on this, the, the actual steady rest that should have been on this machine, it would have handled a lot more cut than that. But that steady rest just ain't really good for a lot of heavy duty work. Okay, so we're going to work on our last pass here. We'll give it one more check. That should be about a sixteenth of an inch. I'm trying to get you a shot so you can see. But just judging it by sight, I'm giving you the best angle because I can't see it as good, but uh, it's just a shade under a sixteenth there. So with a sixteenth being sixty-two thousandths, and we already know that we're going to take about 25 or 30 off of this other face right there. I don't want to make it too short. What I'm going to do is just take another 16th. And whenever I face this other shoulder down here to size, this should put this at just over 27 inches. I got my Armstrong tool holder in there, and this is a, a 60 degree threading tool that's still got the good factory grind on it. And what we're gonna do is just cut us a, a small center on the ID there, 
for our live center to go into and hold it. That should be plenty right there. I don't want to finish this bore. You know, it's going to be bored and threaded on this end. I'd like to go ahead and finish the OD, get all that done, and leave the uh, internal threads here for the last step in the lathe. always try to use the minimal stick out on the tailstock quill as I can get to uh, improve rigidity. So I usually stick my tool in there like this and get it lined up where I want to start my cuts every time with just a little bit of wiggle room and then run the livestock or the uh, tailstock up. I'm gonna go ahead and get this face to the thickness I need. We'll get this done first, and then I'll set a stop here and I'll get this rough down really close to size. So we're gonna finish this width right here about 725. So we got about, you know, about 25 thousandths to come off. Make a couple passes there. I'm gonna use the, the Hackmaster mag-backed indicator down here. Go ahead and put that guy to use. All right, we'll take a cut here and then mic it. See what we got left to come off. All right, we're gonna take 10 thousandths on that. We'll call that finished on the width. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna set a, a stop to this point right here, which is gonna be four and one eighth. From this face out, it's four and one eighth right there. And I'm gonna rough it down and we're gonna leave we're gonna leave this diameter alone for now. After I get it rough down to this point, I'll go in there and we'll start cutting this uh, face groove out of there. All right, that's just ahead of the line right there. Set me a zero with the Hackmaster indicator. All right, what I'm going to do so that just in case this thing ever gets bumped or anything like that, what we'd like to do uh, go in here and just make us a make us a blue line and then just touch it. That's a visual reference as I'm approaching that, knowing that's going to be my stop point right there. All right, we got the tool touched off. And we are about 2.6, 2.612. So this is going to finish here 2 and 7 16 which would be 2.437 inches. All right, so we'll just take it 100 thousandths, and that way, I'll have a nice clean cut there and I can mic it and see what kind of taper that we're going to get in it. Because I imagine I'll, I'll get a little bit of taper. And I think I'll run the flood cooling on it too. And I'm going to run it at a 10 thousandths feed rate, I think. Let's see how it looks. Oh, yeah. A 4140, man, some good stuff. You see, it's, it's pretty tough.
right, we're approaching our zero. There it is. Okay. So let's run her down here and we'll do some miking and see what kind of measurements we're coming up with. All right, let's do some miking and see how straight it is. All right, so that's two inch 507 right there. Two inch 507. That's it. All right, so we got a few tents there. Looks like a half dial. So 507 and a half. So looks like uh, we're doing pretty straight and then it starts getting a little bit bigger there. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. So I can live with that. We can do some polishing to uh, get that down to size. Okay, I think what I'll do is we're going to go ahead and make one more rough cut, even though that's a, that's a nice cut there. We're going to make one more rough cut and get it even closer, and then I'll leave it there, and I want to get all this, I want to get this finished in right here. So this is the tool block that I'm going to use to do the face grooving, but we're not going to use that tool. We're actually going to use this tool right here. That's the one for face grooving. So we'll come in here like this and, and go into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this blade out. And we'll swap it and make sure that we're that our tool is on the proper height. I may have to go out the other way. It's yeah. Okay. I don't know what I did there. I don't remember rubbing it like that. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna, I'm putting it this way because I want to check the height of the tool, but I'll actually flip it around and we'll turn it, we'll turn it 90 degrees when we come in here. I'm gonna use this tool here from Edge that you use to check your, your tool height, make sure you're on center. All right, so it's showing it's a little bit high. Pretty good, just a minor adjustment there. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, I just checked these using this brown and sharp depth mic, and this depth here is 400 thousandths, and this step right here, which is actually where the bearing race, the bearing will will sit on, is 0.375. So it looks like they've got 25 thousandths clearance underneath the the actual bearing right there. You can see that's all that's left of that one is just the race. And I had I had tried to get that off quickly one time and that thing is so tight on there I just didn't bother with it. So that's why that's still stuck on there. So anyway, like I said, we're gonna go, we're gonna touch off and we'll go 375 and then we'll finish this out at 400 deep here. All right, I think I'm about ready to start this. I already got my wall thickness set, which is 156, 530 seconds. Is so I've got a zero set up, and what I've done is I've, I've set up another mag-backed indicator right there, and it's, uh, you see I had to set it. I mean, it's, it's fully pushed in, so I've got it set to the zero. I'll know where to bring it back to, and then we'll be using that for our depth. 
I'm going to use coolant on this, and so it's going to be splashing around. I may have to move the camera back a little bit out of the way, but I'm going to try to get the best shot as I can for you. Alright, so as our touch off, we'll go ahead and set a zero. Give it a little, little bit. See what what she does. Okay, may have to slow it down just a little bit. trick is keeping it off the chuck <laughs> but it's going to make a little bit of a mess all right we're doing pretty good about a hundred thousandths deep So we're a quarter inch deep right here. Got another eighth of an inch to go. And I'm just hand feeding this now. I'm not letting the, I just don't trust machine feeding it. I like to feel it. In case one of those chips want to bind up on there, I can back off on the pressure. All right, so that's 300. That's about 370 right there. Okay, it's doing good. We'll move in and make another cut. Looks like I got enough room there between the tool and the shaft to make one more cut. Yeah, so I'm just, what I did, I just come in till I touch. And I'm just gonna back it off lightly. And I believe I got some other insert tools that I can use to get in there and finish all this in one pass. So we'll come to that later. We're gonna go ahead and make this, this final cut here on the face and then I'll bring it back to our zero uh, to clean that out to our 3 8 depth.
All right, so we're approaching. There's 370. I'm going to go 375, and then I'm going to bring this tool back by by hand using the cross slide here, and just kind of clean that face up some. I'm watching my indicator that I had set up here. We're going to come back to our last zero, which is right there. So that should be our depth in there where our thrust bearing is going to sit. We'll go ahead and give it a check with the depth mic. Look at that right on it so we're gonna go ahead and I need to figure out how wide it needs to be I believe this is the where we're going in 25 thousandths deeper I believe that's gonna be about three quarter inches wide and it's not a critical dimension it's just relief for the bearing so we'll get that figured out and we'll go ahead and I'll know how far to run in and we'll make one one pass across there we'll, we'll plunge in our 25 and then I'm going to feed it across and then come back out. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. I'm going to make a 5 thousandths cleanup pass. On that, uh, on well, bore now. So we'll go into our depth. And with this dial right here, I'm going to feed that in 0.654 inches and that's going to leave us a 13 16 wide land in there. And we want to clean it up so let me reset that. The tool must have moved around a little bit. go. I'm just hand feeding it. Alright, there's our 375. That thing is really wanting to scream at that RPM, so... There's our 25. I'm going to feed across 654. Fifty-four, and back out we go. There it is. It is finished now. So I guess I can we'll check that real quick and see if I hit that one on. Four hundred one. Okay. All right. I think that's going to be it for this particular video. We're going to go ahead and wait till the next episode and start getting the rest of this finished out. All right, so hope you've been enjoying watching it. And I always like using that face grooving tool. I look forward to being able to use it, and it does a really good job. So I'm ready to see this thing finished out.